Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. Back out today with another video in our radio series. And what I want to talk to you about today is I want to talk to you about shark stick antennas and tuning those antennas and why I think those are a great choice, especially for a vehicle. Now, I'm setting up my Gladiator to be mobile with radio. I do not have a radio mounted in the Gladiator. However, it's very easy with the 705 in that wind camp cage. Just set it on the dash. There's a perfect spot recessed in the dash that, that cage sits into perfectly. So it can be moved in and out and then taken away from the vehicle if needs be. And I also have a 100 watt ICOM 7200 that I can carry in the back of the vehicle as well and use it mobily if I need to that I store in a Pelican case with the cables and mic and things for that. The reason I'm doing these things is multi functional. First of all, I want communications that I can use at the Jeep and be able to walk away from the Jeep at the same time with the same equipment other than the antenna. I also want to set this vehicle up so that I can do communications, hobby type communications over things like 20 meters where you can talk, you know, across the United States, across the world, depending on the setup that you have. And I also want this thing set up for localized communications so that this vehicle could be used in a, an emergency management team or an Aries team during localized emergency communications for communication across the county and things like that. So different antennas and different uh, areas, different bandwidths and things like that of the HF, UHF, and VHF bands will do different things for you. And they cover different distances for the most part, depending on the setup that you have. So what I like about these shark sticks is, real quick, just kind of get on that subject really fast is, this is a 20 meter shark stick and it says 20 meters on it. And it's basically a piece of fiberglass that has a ferrule that an antenna that's adjustable is inserted into. And it has adjustment screws on it where you can move this antenna in and out for tuning. And then it's wrapped with a metal coil, which electrically lengthens the antenna. So it makes it longer electrically in a shorter package. And depending on the band that this antenna is made for, it will be either longer or shorter in and of itself. And it will have more or less wraps on it, depending again on the band that this antenna is designed for. You can buy these for just about every working band on the radio. What I've chosen so far is I've chosen a 20 meter ham stick and I use it, I leave it on the Jeep the majority of the time mounted and I'll show you the mount when we go up there here in a minute on just a tri-mag mount that there's no way that thing could possibly move. You have to pry it off there with a pry bar to get it to move. And I use this just for communications, hobby type communications. If I'm doing a POTA activation, like a parks on the air or something like that, this 20 meter stick reaches all over the place. It gives me lots and lots of easy communication that way. I have a 40 meter stick on top of the vehicle right now that gives me that three to 500 mile range stuff and gets me a more localized communications two, three states away. I do hit Ohio sometimes with that, but mainly it jumps at least to the next state or the one beyond that. So that gives me just a little bit more of a concentrated area to talk in. And it's a really good antenna also for doing things like parks on the air, especially if you want to give hunters and things a chance that are more localized that you would jump over top of with 20 meters. But I also want to talk to you about tuning these sticks because what happens with these is you're tuning them to a certain portion of the band that you choose to operate on with an antenna tuner and you're locking them down so that they're set when you want to put them on top of the vehicle and it's as simple as screwing it into a mount or unscrewing it from the mount to change the antennas it's two minutes to change bands if you want to do that the advantage to these for me is that i do what's called qrp or low power operation the 705 most of the time unless i'm using the 7200 the 705, which I use 99% of the time, is only a 10-watt radio at best if you've got it plugged into a 12-volt system. 5 volts if you're running off the battery pack on the back. It runs the same handheld battery as a lot of handhelds run. And you can buy a bigger, bulkier battery for that, which I've got, to give you more milliamps in the battery for a longer lifespan. I've got two of those larger ones, one that's charged up in the pack, one that's on the radio. And then I've also got the 12-volt system of the solar panel from power film that we can talk about in a little bit as well. And that gives me that 12 volts, 10 watts, full power. Here's the caveat with that. 
you're tuning these antennas to reduce SWR. And we've talked about that before because the higher our SWR is, the less of our signal is actually getting out into the atmosphere from the radio. So if you're only operating on a low wattage, you want every bit of that to go out that you can get. And so tuning an antenna to be resonant where you want to transmit is going to give you that. That's called one-to-one -one SWR. And I try to get below 1.5 if I can, 1.6. Once you get above two SWR, your radio doesn't operate correctly and you have to have a tuner. And the only thing that tuner really does is fool the radio into thinking that you have good SWR, when in fact you really don't. So you're still losing transmission power because of high w SWR, but your radio will operate. So when you're talking about 10 watts, you may be cutting yourself down into that five, six watts anyway, even without, you know, even if you've got it plugged into a 12 volt source by having a high SWR. So you have to adjust for that. So that's the beauty of these antennas is that they're easy to tune right to the band you want to operate on, lock them down. Then all you got to do is screw them into the mount when you're ready to go and you're ready to operate on several different bands. And they don't take up a lot of room. I store these behind the seat of my Jeep. They just lay back in there and then I can just switch them out when I want to. And again, it's a two minute job. So let's talk about that real quick and tune up one of these sticks. We'll start with the 40 meter because I don't have it tuned in perfectly yet. I'm not happy with it. Okay, so here we are on the top of my Jeep. Traction boards mounted on top. And here is the mount for my antenna. This is a triple mag MFJ mount. And you can see the antenna just screws down to that mount. It's real simple to get that thing out of there. A wrench on here, wrench on here, you're good to go. Okay, a couple crescent wrenches on this dude, and it comes off real easy. Nothing to it. Screw it out of the mount, and you're ready to change antennas. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this antenna, and we're going to loosen these two set screws, and we're going to adjust this in and out to check our SWR. Okay, when you buy these antennas, and I bought the amount and the antennas I buy from DX Engineering, which is a local company here in Ohio that sells all types of ham radio stuff. If you want to support a local company, I suggest you check out DX Engineering. At any rate, when you buy these shark sticks, it comes with a piece of paper that gives you recommendations of the length that that adjustable portion of the antenna is supposed to be from the ferrule to the tip of the antenna. And that gives you a starting point of where to adjust from. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna work with that, start there, and see what we come up with. Okay, so what I found out with this 40 meter antenna is that this length of whip that they sent with it, and I haven't cut it off, it's stock the way it came in the box, is too short. The best SWR I can get with this thing is about 2.1, and that's all the way extended to where the screw will barely even touch the end of this whip to hold it in. So I went and bought, a piece of eighth inch material just from a hardware store. And I've already went longer now than this whip was to start off with about an inch. And hopefully that is going to change the game on this 40 meter antenna. We're about to find out if that bought us anything. Okay, that's got us at two. So we're still a little bit short, I would say. So we're gonna move that thing out about a quarter of an inch at a time now. Try to dial this thing in. And I got a feeling the 80 meter stick I bought is gonna be the same story. But let's get the 40 tuned in on this video and talk through that because it wasn't quite as easy as it's supposed to be. It wasn't near as easy as the 20 meter stick was. Okay, we've got this thing down to Under two, no matter where I move this away, I'm at 1.78. Sitting right here, I'm at 1.78, 1.8, 1.79. Move away from the truck, goes up to 1.8. I move away from the base of the antenna, I mean, but it's not going over two now. So we might be able to dial that in just a little bit better, quarter of an inch at a time. We'll try it and see. Okay, so, the SWR is 1.69 at the current measurement. And I took the coax all the way back into the truck, sat in the front seat of the truck and checked the SWR, where the radio is going to be operated from most of the time. And then I also checked it back here on the back side where the radio is operated a lot of the time. And it's going between 1.67 and 1.71 respectively. But here's the key to that, okay? 
we are at 12 and a half, 12 and three quarter inches on this. We're gonna tighten it down all the way now so it doesn't move on us. I'm also going to take a black Sharpie and mark this piece of wire all the way around. In case it would ever get bumped. We're gonna screw that in. But what I wanna show you is, okay, the difference here in length is only, you'd have to get clear down to here to lock it in. So about an inch of difference in what it needed to be and what comes with the antenna. Now, could this have been a fluke and there was a short piece put into the antenna by accident when it was packaged? Possibly. Could it be that that works for most setups and just doesn't work for mine? I needed that extra inch. That's possible too. So I'm not knocking the antenna manufacturer by any means and saying that they sent me a product that was junk. I just had to make adjustments to make it work for me, which meant going out and spending five more dollars on a piece of eighth inch steel rod. Whereas this one's a little bit too short. I suspect I'll be the same when I get to the 80 meter. I don't know that for sure. We're not gonna spend time in this video tuning that antenna. We've got the 40 meter tuned up to where I want it. That's gonna give me pretty good localized communication or not, not dead local, not two meter local, but it'll give me state, one state over, Indiana, Illinois, things like that. And then up into areas of New England, New York, probably fairly easily. And that's what I was looking for versus the 20 meter antenna, which generally skips all the way west or even goes overseas. So having multiples of these shark sticks, depending on what you aim to accomplish with your radio, can be important. And the fact that they just switch in and out very quickly, once you get them set up and tuned in, also makes them very advantageous for on-the-go communications in a vehicle. All right, so we've got our radio set up now. Or we've got our 40 meter antenna tuned in. The exercise now becomes tailgate of the truck. Let's turn on FT8. Let's turn on grid tracker and see where we're getting spotted because that's going to tell us what our shotgun blast is for signal. Remember what I was talking about earlier with, you know, 20 meters is cylinder bore. Think of it as a shotgun. 40 meters, modified choke. 80 meters, full choke. So right now we're at the modified choke level. We're probably going to be hitting three states away, something like that, but we're not going to be blowing clear out west or overseas with this. We may blow down south into Georgia, places like that from southeast Ohio. We may blow up into New England a little bit. Michigan, we should be able to hit. We should be able to hit some Indiana, one state over. So if you're trying to establish comms state to state, like my parents that live in Indiana, I wanted to talk to them in a situation where there was no power or something like that, or they didn't have cell service and things of that nature, I could do it with these programs like Windlink running Vera, like we talked about in the last video. But I've got to be able to get that signal where I want it to go. And that's the key to understanding these different bands and different antenna configurations. So I'm going to switch the camera around here and let you guys look at this again. Like I said, nothing fancy, probably going to be some reflection in it, but you'll be able to see the blue pins, the blue pins in the map are people that are spotting my signal. Okay, so here we go. You can see the blue pins. You got one in North Dakota. I don't have the states pulled up on this map, just some cities, but you can see Boston Mass. You can see down into West Virginia, North Carolina, Ohio is me. That single blue dot in Ohio is me. You're over there, Indiana, Illinois territory, probably Indiana, the far west side of Indiana. But we're getting that modified blast. North Dakota is about as far west as we're going to go. And we're not going to go too far into New England other than, you know, up in Boston. But we're not going to hit anything up around the Canadian border areas probably. Although we do have one, looks like it might have hit right above into Canada right there. But again, that's a pretty short distance, probably seven, 800 miles at the most. What we're looking for out of this is we're looking for that three to 500 mile range. We're probably getting a little bit beyond that, but we're getting some of that too. So 40 meters is a good modified choke. Like I said, it's gonna bring you down to getting some near state communications if that's what you're looking for. So we've got 20 meters, it's gonna get us everywhere. 40 meters more localized, and then 80 meters will be more localized than that even especially at night when 80 meters is hot. 40 meters is supposed to be a nighttime band. 40 meters is great all day if you're trying to do, you know, communication that's closer to your location. All right, guys. Well, I think we've accomplished what we set out to do today for the most part. We 
had a 40 meter shark stick that was out of tune. We pulled that thing down. We had to buy another piece of metal, unfortunately, from a hardware store to get it to tune. And I was going to show you, I've got that piece of paper here that comes with the shark sticks. And it's basically a table that tells you how long your whip should start out. And when you look at this thing on the 40 meters, it says nine inches, if I remember right. Put my glass on to read it. Actually, it says eight inches for seven to 7.3. We're at 12 and three quarter inches. So this is not perfect by any means, and it's gonna depend on your setup, what you've got going on probably, and how your antenna's mounted and things like that, what your ground plane's like, all those types of things make a difference on how your antenna operates wasn't a big deal to me and I'll probably contact a manufacturer and see if they can just send me a longer piece of whip because this is a piece of carbon steel. That whip is made out of some really heavy duty stainless, I would imagine, so that it doesn't rust. Carbon steel is going to rust up there. So I'll use it temporarily. It works for right now. I get the job done and it was an easy workaround for me and it's an easy workaround for you if you run into the same problem. And then I'll see about getting a different whip for that thing that's the right one, that's the right length and put it on there and retune. But for now, we're good to go. We're communicating. We're communicating just a few states away, just like we wanted to, talking about that modified choke on the shotgun. And I think we got her done, guys. I appreciate you joining for this video. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.